Now that I'm passing the folder, I have the ability to get the email list item for that particular email, right? I'll, I'll find out what specific email list item the user clicked on to get to this email view, all right? So I'm gonna accept this over here using a at request param. At request param string folder, okay? This is going to be um, this is going to be passed in, and um, I'm thinking right now if this should be optional or if it should be mandatory. I feel like it's good for it to be mandatory because we don't want these email URLs to be hot linkable or to be shareable. We don't expect people to just type in the email, so it's okay for them to have this experience where they don't they're not worried about the URL. They just click on an item and then they see the email. Okay. Um, the point of having this is basically to identify where the user came from, and we expect the user to come from the inbox page. We don't expect the user to get to the email view page from anywhere else. They have to click on an I, you know, an email list item to get here, which is why I'm comfortable not making this optional, making that mandatory. Okay. Uh, now that I have this, I have all the three things that I need to get the email list item, all right? What is the key in the email list item? We need the user ID, we already have it, it's a logged in user. We have the label, which is the folder query parameter, and we have the created time UUID, which is basically the email.id, the email that we are actually viewing at that point. So we have all the three things. I can construct this email list item key, and I can find the specific email list item, and I can mark it as under it if it, has, it hasn't been under it already, okay? So uh, here I am, um, let's say I got the email over here, okay? Did the did the tools, all that stuff. Now I'm going to create a new key equals new email list item key, right? Import this guy and now I can set the values on it. Key that set ID is what is it called? User ID. Okay. Key that set label is the folder, the query param that we just passed. Key that set time UUID is email dot get ID. Now I can use the email list item repository dot find by ID of this key. Okay, there's gonna be an optional. Optional email list item is going to be this guy, find by ID. Now that I have this, I can get the item, all right? Uh, if optional email list item that is present, then I'm gonna have to do a bunch of things. If it's not present, then it's a bit of an odd condition. I'm just gonna silently not do anything. I don't think it's an error condition. If I have successfully retrieved an email, uh, I would still want to show that email to the user. So um, I'm gonna just, if the optional email item has a value, that means that if there is a email list item for the email ID and the folder that the user has entered, I'm going to manage the red unread status, all right? So I'm going to do a get on the optional email list item and put it as email list item, that's fine. And now if email list item dot is unread, okay? If the email hasn't been read before, then I'm gonna have to set it as read. I'm gonna say email list item dot set unread to be false. It is not unread anymore. It has been read. And I'm gonna have to do the repository dot save off email list item. Okay, we marked it as unread. We marked it as read, so we're gonna have to persist it so that next time the page loads, it's not gonna show up as unread. It's just gonna show up like, okay, this email item was viewed in this particular folder, all right? One other thing I would need to do is decrement the counter for the folder that I'm viewing, 
okay so i'm in the inbox folder for this user i'm gonna have to get the uh, the under email stats repository and decrement the counter okay so i'm gonna do a dependency injection for that guy under email stats repository and I'm gonna fire a decrement over here. And then this is happening only when the email item is under it, right? If they're reading it again, it's not gonna decrement. So this is gonna be unread email stats repository dot decrement under it count. The user ID is the user ID and the label is the folder, right? It is going to decrement it. There is one problem here though, which is that um, this is going to decrement and uh, it's gonna make the change, but not when the user is viewing it, okay? So let me show you what I mean. The server is restarted. I have 10 items here. I'm gonna view one. What it's done is it's put all the things in the model for this page to load and then it's gone and decremented it. You see here, it hasn't decremented the count, but if I were to refresh this, See, now it becomes nine. So what we wanna do is decrement before we fetch the 100 status, okay? Or fetch the 100 status after we do the decrement so that when they read it, they immediately see that the count has gone down by one. So here, I'm going to get this guy and move this after we do this. Okay, so the status is gonna get the latest value at the time of the the email being read and not before we actually do the manipulation, okay? I'm going to refresh this. I'm going to reload. Now it has 10, I'm gonna click, and it becomes nine, okay? I'm gonna compose a message, send it to myself. It becomes 10 again. I view that message, it becomes nine, all right? And then I go back and view that same message. It is going to stay nine, right? This is the behavior that we want from the unread count, and it is going. It is tracking it properly. The one last thing that I want to do is uh, have some kind of a visual indicator for whether this thing is read or unread, because right now we don't have anything, right? So we have, uh, yeah. I mean, it's all it's all same UI treatment. It's hard for me to tell whether a single message is read or unread. So I'm gonna go here to the listing page, the inbox page, and let me put some style to indicate that something is read or not read. Let me fix these uh, placeholders over here, right? So I'm gonna call this subject, and uh, this is the two IDs. Or I'm gonna call this ABC, DEF, should be good. Those things don't matter. It's just that when you're seeing this page, you will know what is going to be rendered, like an approximation of what will be rendered. All right, so uh, here I'm going to add a class which is going to make the text as bold, okay? I'm gonna put a class over here. I'm gonna make this dot bold text. I don't know if Bootstrap has a class like that. Let's see. We have a list group here. We have an active item, which is this guy. Is there some kind of color treatment? Oh, here it is. There is some color treatment here. Uh, I'm going to mark this as, um, let me take this guy, right? List group item primary, okay? I'm gonna put this class, list group item primary when something is red and if, is unread, and if it's read, I'm going to remove that class, okay? So I'm going to do that in the, what was this one? This is the list group item. So which one is the list group item here? List group. This is the list group item, okay? So this one is gonna have a conditional class based on whether the particular item has been read or unread, right? And I can specify a th colon class append, 
this is a way for me to add a class based on a condition. I'm gonna conditionally add a class depending on whether the email is read or not, right? So what is the condition? I have a condition here which is email dot is read, okay? So depending on whether this email is read or not, I want it to have the class which is this guy, right? So this uses a ternary operator to specify whether this is read or not have this flag influence whether this class shows up or not, right? So I'm gonna remove this. This is a ternary operator. This is the syntax for it. If it is if it is red, then no class. Uh, but if it is not red, I'm gonna put this list group item primary class to be displayed, okay? So this is the conditional operator, which is gonna selectively add this class, okay? So um, I don't know if this is gonna look good, but I'm... Um, I guess I'll be okay with it either way. We will see. There seems to be a template issue. Is red cannot be found. So what do they call it? Is unread? Email list item is unread. Okay, so I'll go back to the inbox page. Is unread. If it's unread, then it has to do this. Otherwise, do this. I feel like this would work. Just one item without the colon and the other item. We'll see. It's not email, it's message. Okay, so this looks kind of okay. So these are unread uh, messages, which is why it's showing up in blue. I can click on it and then I can see it. And now I go back, that is not unread anymore, right? So some basic styling, feel free to change it to anything else. You can make it bold if you want. It's basically the styling that influences uh, how these unread messages are being displayed. But uh, what we've done is with this thing, we have tracked the red unread property. We are using the counter for it, we are tracking it, and we are also using a nice visual indicator to display the red versus unread messages. And we are also using the right hooks to mark it as one versus another, right? When the page is being loaded, when the email is being seen, if it hasn't been seen before, we mark it as uh, red and decrement the counter. If it has been seen before, we don't do any of that stuff, right? So this is how we do the increment and the decrement for the counter, and this is going to um, stay in sync with the red versus unread messages on this um, in this folder, right? So this is the counter functionality for our messaging app. I'm gonna go over here and uh, commit this thing. Let's see. Um, Add counter and red and red tracking. So feel free to pick this comment up and follow along if you are having any trouble.